Good evening, YouTube family. One of my viewers requested for me to make a video. And I commented back that I will go ahead and do so. So, the video has to do with my entire weight loss journey from when I got surgery to when I found out that I was pregnant to the regain that occurred and my struggles. So, sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea. We're going to be here. Alright guys, so... Starting weight, pre-surgery, 400 pounds. Lost 125 pounds on my own. Hit a three-year stall. Decided in 2017 I was going to have weight loss surgery. I had my weight loss surgery August 7th, 2017 in LaGrange, Georgia with Dr. Wesley Turton which I'm now finding out that he's no longer at that hospital. He's still in practice, but, you know, separate from the hospital. Um, I lost an additional 100 pounds after surgery. I got down to 171. During my post-op, I followed everything that was in the book. I, you know, had, was eating low carb, low sugar, followed everything to the T. I was actively walking. Um, I was able to, you know, drop weight kind of rapidly because I was primarily doing a lot of cardio. Um, I got pregnant in 2019, but I ended up having a miscarriage. Um, then the pandemic hit this entire that entire time i was maintaining my weight loss of 225 pounds from 2017 till 2021 i maintained a 225 pound weight loss four years when I got pregnant with my son, it was during the pandemic, it was around, see, I found out I was pregnant June 13th, 2021. Um, I was 190 pounds at that time. We had just gotten back from Florida and Kansas. Um, when I got back from the wedding in, in, Mar in May, of 2021 I still was the same weight I was like between 175 and 180 when we went to Wichita Kansas that's when I noticed the weight fluctuation but I didn't pay it any mind or pay it any attention because I figured you know with travel you know the swelling the bloating and things like that and I stayed low carb keto now um when I found out that I was pregnant, I was 190 pounds. And that let me know, okay, this is where the weight gain is coming from. You're pregnant. But at the same time, I started to notice all the food, ketogenic foods, low-carb foods that I took pleasure in eating and enjoying made me absolutely sick to my stomach. It wasn't high fat. It was just low-carb you know, moderate fat, like bacon and eggs and sausages and, you know, meats and things like that. But my stomach would not, Junior did not tolerate it. Him on the outside world now, he loves bacon and sausages, but I just couldn't stomach it when I was pregnant. And the one thing that I feared by being pregnant was the weight gain. Gaining the weight taking advantage of my pregnancy to eat what I wanted and not be able to lose it again. Here we are today. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely regret nothing of my journey. Nothing. 
the ups, the downs, the training for the half marathon, getting my first half marathon bat, um, medal, doing all the challenges with, you know, C to 5K and all the 5K runs that we did, you know, during the pandemic, me doing 75 hard twice. And that was all before I was, was pregnant. <clears throat> so I was able to do all that stuff and be physically active. Little did I know I would find out you know, that before my placenta developed, I had to be put on progesterone suppositories because of my hormone levels. Now, a little backstory as far as my hormone levels go. When I was 16 years old, my mom put me on depo shots through Planned Parenthood, and I did not get my cycle for close to five to seven years from being a teenager. Then I got told I had endometriosis. Then I got told I had PCOS. My mom passed in 2017 and I got told I had to be put on high blood pressure pills. Then I got told I was pre-diabetic. So a lot of stuff pretty much happened. You know. <clears throat> over the years. But once I had my VSG... I got rid of a lot of those problems, you know. I probably still have PCOS, but it's not affecting me that much. But I didn't put a lot of weight back on, so I know it's probably affecting me. Now, um, along with the progesterone and uh, suppositories, I got told and diagnosed with having a saddle pulmonary embolism meaning I had a massive branching blood clot between my lungs it was like a literally like a hand size going this way and a hand size going that way in both of my lungs I was 20 weeks pregnant when they diagnosed me with that I had to be hospitalized we had to monitor junior and I had to start Lovenox injections so from 20 weeks gestation until I gave birth to my son, I was on love and ox injections. But at the same time, we had hit some hardship in Colorado and we moved to Reno, Nevada when I was seven months pregnant. I don't like it here, but my son was born here. And ever since we moved here, it's always felt like there's been one thing after another, after another, after another, and it has not been positive besides the birth of my son. Also, um, along with that, then I get told by my doctor I'm high risk pregnancy. Prior to being diagnosed with the um, blood clots because of my age. I was healthy, but because of my age, I was considered high risk, and so I had to be monitored even closer. Um, my anatomy scans all were, you know, were fine and everything like that. Now, when we talk about eating, nothing would stay down except french fries, potatoes, rice, everything that I used to eat before I went to a low carb ketogenic lifestyle. Um, I craved Frosties, vanilla. I craved french fries from McDonald's. Um, I had the McDonald's app on my phone, so I got french fries for like a dollar all the time. Um, it didn't matter what type of french fry. Then we move here, and I start working for my sister at Domino's. Every night I came home with a box of the cinnamon twists, <clears throat> or lava cakes, or brownies for my husband, and a thin crust pepperoni pizza every night. So, before we left Colorado, I was always concerned about my weight at every one of my visits because I noticed the scale started to go up. 
and my nurse she was like don't worry about it you're growing a baby most of the weight is the placenta the fluid da 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 mentally i knew better but like i said nothing would stay settled in my stomach the day i gave birth to my son i was 250 pounds you would figure with you know me attempting to breastfeed and trying to get back to being active but i still had to be cleared from the blood clots because right after i gave birth i'm right back on the blood clots i was only off the blood thinners um, for 24 hours so i'm back on the lovenox injections i'm having to go see a cardiologist i'm having to go see all these doctors post you know postpartum and you i attempted so hard so much to get back on track i even meal prepped the day before i went in to be induced i made egg roll in a bowl so i had that for a few days but it just wasn't enough and everybody kept telling me oh give yourself grace you just had a baby the weight will come off i gave birth 15 months ago at 250 i'm 271 right now i gained a little bit of weight from the other day when i got down back to 268 we went to the fair and even though i had you know the kebabs and the um the polish sausage i had a lot of built bars and then when we came home um i had some ice cream and things like that but that's all done with so 15 months 50 60 70 20 more pounds in 15 months i put on from having my son in 2022. Here we are, 2023, June 4th. My surge anniversary is August 7th, 2023. I'll be six years post-op. I would like to lose these 20 pounds and then some. I just have to have more willpower. I get tempted with the things that my husband brings in the house and I can't tell him no. You know, um, I try to feed my son a lot of protein and things like that. You know, he's a kid, but I'm also mindful of what I'm feeding him because I don't want him to grow up with the obese childhood obesity that I did. So it's a balancing act. <laughs> it's a two against one balancing act and I'm starting to feel like if I cannot have in the house what I want to eat to know that it's going to fuel my body instead of hurting my body then I might as well fast but I also don't want to feel like it's a punishment either all I know is I fought from 2011 to 2021 to keep and remain healthy and active. And all it took was for me to get pregnant. The one thing that I've wanted more in this world than to have my mother alive is to have my son. And I'm right back to being morbidly obese. I don't want to resort to going back under the knife. Because if I can do this prior to surgery and after surgery, why can't I do it now? With so much things that's been going on. Emotionally, mentally, it's been a struggle. Like, seriously, it's been hard. One thing is like one thing after another, and I just pray to God, like, I'm trusting you. I really, really am trusting you. It's just hard living in this world, and it's hard. But that's my struggles with my weight. 
I'm trying my best not to get any bigger, and I don't think I will, because I'm going to weigh in on Friday, and we're going to be back in the 260s or less. Because I don't want to buy clothes that are bigger, because even my, preg my, my maternity clothes are a little snug. 20 pounds snug. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed um, my backstory. And um, any assistance or suggestions, just know I do not do good with carbs. Hello, 20 pounds. Um, so anything that has to do with no carbs, I'm not going to eat bread. I, I, I can't, you know, bread transforms into sugars and it causes, you know, I have a family history of diabetes on both sides, so I don't want that. Anyways, you heard my backstory. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being supportive and hearing my whys. And hopefully we can get this under control again and get our life back. So thank you so much. I'll talk to you all later.